Sabbath. Yeah. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. I'm thankful we can be here by the South Fork Creek and worship the Lord. Uh, there's one song that comes to my mind. Some of you may know this one. Some of you may not may not know it. Um, it's one of my favorite Sabbath songs. The Sabbath is here. My heart is at rest. There's peace with my Savior. My sins are confessed. My wonderful Jesus has taken my sin. From guilt I am free. No burden within. This is the rest. He promised to give the joy of salvation that makes a heart live the fullness of Sabbath. Rest in our hearts, time with our Savior, new strength He imparts. We'll worship in heaven, we'll join one and all. So why not begin now to answer his call? 
Come, my special people, I offer my best. Come, taste of my goodness. Come, enter my rest. Come, taste of my goodness. Come, enter my rest. All right, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for bringing us together here. Thank you that we can be in the nature that you have created. We thank you for your word. Please, Father, speak to us through your word. Keep me, Father, from speaking my own ideas or my own plans. Give me grace, Father, to speak the message that you would want to be spoken. Thank you, Father. We ask for freedom here, that we would have freedom through your Holy Spirit to think, to make decisions, to go from this place changed and equipped for the challenges and the temptations in this coming week. We thank you and we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus, Yeshua, amen. Okay, let's, for those of you who have your Bible with you, let's turn to the book of Proverbs, chapter 5 and verse 22. All right, put your finger in that and uh, we're going to have uh, testimony time. So uh, Brother Donovan would like to come up and share his testimony. Yes. Okay. So, I haven't been on the videos in the past like month or so because I've been in Jamaica where I was given an opportunity to uh, preach at a camp meeting. But while I was in Jamaica, I had some amazing experiences. The first one I want to share is that my allergies, I've been allergic to cats and dogs my entire life. And the God impressed it upon me, just pray about it. Like, I, I will heal you. You know, I am your healer. So, so anything you ask in my name, you shall receive it if you believe it, right? So I took that to heart and I said, okay, you know, I'm going to pray for these allergies because in Jamaica, I was having terrible allergies, just terrible allergies. And even here, Brother Titus, you can testify that every time I'd be in the house, I'd be sneezing, mm -hmm. you know, because of the cats and whatnot. Jesus has totally freed me from allergies. Mm -hmm. Totally 100% freed oh, me hallelujah. from allergies. Woo! It's amazing. So <laughs> I, I literally was holding Smokey the cat earlier and had my face right up next to it. Nothing. Amen. Not even a sneeze. Nothing. So praise God for that. And then um, an even bigger testimony really quick is my eyesight. I have, uh, I've always worn contacts or glasses my entire life. Always. And I never, even as a Christian, I never thought... Would God heal my eyesight? You know, I never thought to even ask him, right? Sometimes it's like that. We, we, for, we don't even think to ask him things because we're so ingrained in our minds. It's just the way it is. But he says, anything that you ask in my name, believe and you shall receive it, right? So I prayed for my eyesight. I said, Father, if you can heal my allergies, you can heal my eyesight. So I decided to give up my glasses, give up my contacts. And I said, I'm going to rely on God for healing. And praise God, he's healed my eyesight. It's amazing. I can see so much better than I could before I had, before. I, it's, 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 I, it's, I can't even say in words. It's absolutely amazing. When I started the journey, giving up my glasses, I was reading, I was looked, I opened up my Bible and I couldn't even read the words. It's how bad my vision was. And I was sitting there and I wasn't frustrated, but I was just sitting there. And then um, my brother in Christ, uh, the one I was staying with, Brother Howard, he looked at me, he said, can you read it? And I said, no, I can't read it. And I shut the book. And then that morning, I prayed about it that night, and, and in the morning I prayed about it. But that morning I got up, and I just decided to open up the Bible and look. And I could read the words. It was amazing. Woo, it hallelujah. It was complete healing overnight. <laughs> I could read the words of the Bible. And I, I yes. ran up, I said, praise God, I can read. <laughs> yeah. I can, my sight's back, you know. Oh. Um, and then one more while I was in Jamaica, I, um, I was playing volleyball and I sprained my ankle. And it was starting to hurt really bad. Like I was limping around. We were walking in town and stuff. And then I just thought to myself, I'm like, if God's going to heal my eyesight, if he's going to heal my allergies, he can heal this ankle too. So I said, hey, everybody, would you all come together and let's pray about it? So we all came together 
and they laid hands on my ankle. We all prayed for healing. We prayed for it. And Jesus healed it. As we were praying, the pain left. And it's been totally rock solid since then. No problems at all. So just a quick testimony to say that if you have any problems in your life, any illnesses, any sicknesses, pray about it and believe. Pray and fast and just spend, if you have to spend hours in prayer and believe that God will do it because he said he would in his word. Mm. So anyways, I learned a lot in Jamaica and that was one thing. So praise God. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Donovan. Yes. All right. Anybody else? Would you like to give a testimony? Uh, you can come up here. Come on up, Dad. Well, I remember uh, getting the jumper cables this morning. Uh, Thomas got his jumper cables, and we jumped. Tassie, was that her name? Jumped her car, and then went back to my car and didn't have my keys. I thought, well, I wonder where they went. And I thought about it, thought about it, so I went and looked in. Stephanie's car, which I had borrowed to jump Tassie's car with, and there were my keys in the car seat. So praise the Lord, He helped me find my car keys. Yes. Yeah, there's many times where I'm I misplace something. I'm looking for it, I can't find it. I search for it, I can't find it. And then when I pray, I say, Father in heaven, please show me where it is, because I can't remember. I'm asking in the name of Your Son Jesus. Then, like after I pray. I'll find it. <laughs> Thank you, Daddy. Yep. Anybody else uh, would like to give your testimony or tell, tell us what Jesus is doing in your life? You don't have to come up here. I can just give you the microphone. You can be off camera if you want. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 22. His own iniquities shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the cords of his sins. Okay, we're going to illustrate how this works. Uh, Levi, would you like to come up here? All right, come over a little closer here. Okay, you want to put your hands together like that? There we go. Okay, can you take your hands and break it free? There we go. Good. Woo! Good job. So this illustrates how sin works. At first, sin is not very strong. But over time, it becomes stronger. All right, see if you can break it. Oh, he broke it. <laughs> wow, good, okay. Ooh, did that hurt? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I guess I'm not going to use the rest of my thread, but <laughs> if we, you did a really good job, Logan. You can sit back down. If we would use more thread, eventually we could make enough wraps where he can't get free anymore. Who is the mighty deliverer? Jesus, Jesus Yeshua. So, you may go a little bit into sin and you may be able to break free. But over years and years, as sin gets stronger and stronger and stronger in your life, you'll find 
that you get bound tighter and tighter. The bond is stronger and stronger. And you'll find out that you cannot break free. Let's look at that verse again. His own iniquities shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the cords of his sins. Sin has cords with it. It will wrap you up. It will bind you up. It will enslave you. What is sin? The Bible says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, that sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is disobeying the perfect law of God. As we choose to disobey God, these habits, these sinful habits can go stronger, stronger, stronger until we try to break free, but we cannot. So if you're all bound up with those cords of sin, you don't have to stay that way. You can call out on the name of Jesus. You can be set free. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah chapter 61 and verses 1 through 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the broken hearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. So, if the cords of your sin are holding you tightly, and you can't break free, then I encourage you, come to Jesus. Call on Jesus. If you are in the prison house of sin, I encourage you, I invite you, come to Jesus. Maybe you're in the prison house of depression and you have tried to break free and you cannot. Or maybe you have hatred in your heart towards someone who has hurt you. And that hatred, you can't get past it. You're in that darkness of hatred and you have hatred, you can't get rid of it. It's enslaving you. Maybe the chains, the cords of lust are holding you back, keeping you from living free. Maybe pornography keeps you bound up. You try to break free, you cannot. Maybe alcohol keeping you chained up. This cord is keeping you bound and you can't get loose. Maybe tobacco. Maybe some kind of drugs is holding you tightly. You can't get free. Come to Jesus. You can come right now. You can come today. That's why the Father sent His Son. It's so that you can be delivered. So that I can be delivered. So we can live free. So we can live pure. So we can live holy. Nothing is too hard for Him. Nothing is too hard for Him. Yes.
Over the years, the sin, one rap after another, after another, it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. But praise God, Jesus is stronger than all those cords of sin. And He takes His knife and He cuts you loose so that in gratitude, He takes that knife, He cuts you loose, so then out of gratitude, you live free, you live holy, you live pure, you live a new life. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank You that even though we have become bound up through sin, that You sent Your only Son to set us free so that we can live free. Thank You for giving Your Son. We ask for all those that are here and those that are watching, those that are all bound up, all those that are tied up, that they would be set free, that they could live the life of freedom that You designed that we each could live. Thank you. We ask for this deliverance and we thank you for it. In the name of your son Jesus, Yeshua. Amen.